not all distributive shock is septic shock. The term distributive shock is a category of shock that encompasses vasoplegia. Septic shock is two thirds of all shock that we see, but there's much more to that category. Remember in distributive shock, this is the situation where there's vasoplegia. The arteries and veins can't vasoconstrict or venoconstrict, but we should talk about other diagnoses of distributive shock so you don't get locked into sepsis. The first is anaphylactic shock. This is vasoplegia secondary to mast cell degranulation from exposure to an antigen. The next one is neurogenic shock, and this is an in injury to the spinal cord along the sympathetic chain that causes there to be vasoplegia because we lose sympathetic tone. A key feature of neurogenic shock is you get hypotension with bradycardia. Typically when you get vasodilation, you get an increased reflex tachycardia, but with neurogenic shock, you can't increase your sympathetic drive, so you get bradycardia. Another form of distributive shock is adrenal insufficiency. This is secondary to the abrupt cessation of steroids that the patient's been on chronically. Another cause of distributive shock is someone who is severely acidotic. Because of the acidosis, there's loss also vasomotor tone. We can also cause distributive shock iatrogenically by some of the drugs that we give. Think about things like propofol that cause vasodilation. We can also get distributive shock by toxins being in the body, like patients who are in liver failure. Pancreatitis can cause release of cytokines and cause a systemic inflammatory response syndrome. When you have a patient who's in distributive shock, of course you're going to think about sepsis, but don't forget to consider the other etiologies. And that's why it's important to recognize that 